hello, my name is David Findlay. I wrote and directed the short film Lay Me by the Shore, which is presented in um, the shorts program of 14 plus uh, of generation at this year's Berlin Alley. Hi, my name is Ayo Puglia. Um, I'm an actor, a part of the film of Lay Me by the Shore by David. I'm Kai Smith. I'm also an actor in David Finley's Lay Me by the Shore. Hi, my name is Jan Felix Wuttig, and today I'm here with director David Findlay and actors Ayla Pulio and Kai Smith to talk about the film Lay Me by the Shore. Welcome, guys. Pleased to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for being here. Um, I thank you so much for the film. I found it to be uh, very, very beautiful and uh, it it brings together so many different things. Um, it has that that kind of contrast about um, that that sense of inner inner turmoil of of loss um, of of um, a group of friends struggling with with the loss uh, with the loss of a loved one, and at the same time that that sense of a of a vivid hot in a sense romantic summer. Um, I guess my first question is to you, David. Um, how did you conceive of the film uh, in the beginning? Was that kind of did it come from from uh, the White Birch song? Did you did, was yeah. that kind of the issue? No, no that the, the song from the White Birch came a little bit later. I suppose I suppose the beginning was um, April 2020, which was during you know kind of the very beginning of the pandemic and. And that, you know, sort of realizing towards the end of that month, like, oh my God, it's been 10 years since, since I lost a friend um, as a teenager um, during, uh, yeah, to an accident. And I think, yeah, just the realization that, oh my God, it, it had been 10 years. And, and thinking about that in a time where I was at home and not out experiencing the world, not out kind of intaking and, and without doing it consciously I, I just ended up kind of looking inwards you know for for potential inspiration to make something um and really not consciously it just kind of ended up happening just by virtue of being kind of stuck at home and, and kind of thinking about that period and and yeah just kind of realizing like wow it had, it had been 10 years certainly some sadness uh you know lingers but but most vividly just kind of felt like such a precise stamp on like a period of time that that had elapsed and kind of it just brought me back, you know, I just remember so, so well the everything. And I can remember what music I was listening to. I can remember what people were wearing. I can remember the smells. And, and I thought, yeah, I thought there's just something there to, that was worth kind of um, exploring and, and delving into um, in, in trying to, yeah, make a film about experiencing grief for the first time, but also a film about youth, you know, a, a film about what it's like to, to be young and how, how when you're young, you just feel things like pretty intensely. That's how I remember things. I, I remember if I was walking home from school with music on, um, I, w I was like in my own music video, you know what I mean? Like my life wasn't very dramatic, but if this girl didn't talk to me or if this thing happened or then I, you know, I could just see like, I'm in the middle of this big, great cinematic film that is my life. And oh my God. And, and I just felt like, okay, like having this event kind of brought me back and, and I thought, yeah, okay, I think, I think there's something left in me that, that, um, that needs to be worked out or resolved and, and through kind of sharing the experience, you know, with, with Isla and Kai and, and the whole team that made the film. Um, yeah, you just kind of, uh, it ends up just being completely cathartic and, and healing in a way, actually. So so yeah, so I started writing and then um, maybe like two or three months in, I, I heard the song Lay Me By The Shore by the White Birch, um, this, this great musical artist from Norway. And very quickly, it just kind of just, it just made sense all of a sudden. It just, it just clicked. Um, and then a year later, we shot it um, in Vancouver last year. Yeah, I think that that shows really well in the film, uh, especially that, that kind of uh, cinematic experience that you talked about. Um, there's this um, kind of piecing together of, of scenes and uh, um, Lay Me By The Shore is, is playing on, on audio and it uh, 
yeah, it, it gives off a lot of a lot of vibe, a lot of um, a certain moodiness. Um, and I think what what's also kind of um, you know what what translates really well is kind of um, the the acting that you guys, Ayla and Kai, especially show in in in, in portraying those scenes and. What I would like to know is kind of how how the three of you kind of met up. What um, what brought that together? That collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, David, Kai, and I worked on a project previously, and kind of when we saw the casting call for this project in particular, we like immediately kind of just submitted to kind of you know see what the project was like, and then you know, we ended up meeting with David multiple times and kind of just talking about the film and just kind of, yeah, talking through different scenes and kind of like figuring out, you know, what his experience was like to, you know, go through that experience in high school and kind of just encompass that sort of role. But yeah, it just took a lot of like meeting up and having a lot of conversations of, you know, comfortability and sharing our own experiences with grief. grief. So I think that that was how we kind of got into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think exactly like like Isla said, um, we met working on a on a very short short film before Lamey by the Shore, and it was kind of a, a vignette little short, and and their part in the film was like by far the best, and I was like, oh my god, the, these two have something really special, and and so much so that I thought, and I was writing Lamey by the Shore at the time, and I thought oh, th that's exactly what I'm after. But somehow, and this is really, really silly of me, but I thought, well, I, okay, I worked with them. Like, I'll, I, I think I'll want to work with someone else. But I was writing my mood board and, and piecing together all these images and, and making a treatment of all these references. And it was all like beautiful images from photo books and stuff. And then a bunch of images of these two and Instagram and their friends basically just being like, this is what I'm after. Like they, these, these kids like this, they, they, they just have this great feeling. Um, and then, and then we just kind of sent out this casting call pretty, pretty wide. And I was looking for pretty specifically non-actors or, or, or young kids with, with not much experience, but who had these artistic sensibilities. And so I was looking, for, I was casting out at like skate shops at like music places in schools and stuff. And, and, um, and yeah, they, they sent in a tape and, and I wasn't asking anyone to, to like kind of do a scene. I was just asking people to introduce themselves and tell me like what kind of movies they watch, what kind of film, what kind of uh, music they listen to, what, do, what what are they like and and why they might want to be a part of a project like this. And and Isla and Kai's video was the first one that I saw and, and they put together such a nice video. It's like eight minutes had like just like really personal, fun little videos of them. Um, and it yeah, kind of instantly I thought like, yeah like duh like why did I even think it, it should be someone else like <laughs> that was silly of me so so very quickly it was like okay yeah the, these are these are it um and and we spoke a bunch and then yeah then and then I went to Vancouver um for like two months prior to to shooting and just to hang out and kind of get really comfortable get to know each other um because it was really important to me to not just have them learn lines you know what I mean um yeah. I was wanting to to cast them and and then around them we cast a lot of their actual friends which was such a fun process as well oh, wow. um and i just i just knew like there was what was important was actually capturing some authenticity over over anything else um and i think they did that brilliantly yeah i think so too um i i, I guess my question would be then like how how did you Ayla and Kai go about constructing these these characters because it's you know at, at one point you 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 have a lot of intimacy and tenderness but there's also a lot going on sort of underneath the skin those are complex characters in a way yeah um I would say just we spent a lot of time with David prior to filming and yeah. we went over what each person each character's mental state would be and I think that went into how like the end product of how it came out because um yeah I 
I feel like the main focus was on Isla's character, but the ones like the the character surrounding Isla's character, it's pretty cool to like go in and see each person's like even mm -hmm. though it's maybe not verbal, but visually you can see that there's like these deep connections with like those close to him and like those that love him. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. I mean, I think for me, like, it was the way I kind of navigated it was having a lot of conversations with David and kind of rereading, you know, the scenes and scenarios multiple times, but also like, you know, find, finding correlations in my life that I related to the character Noah and kind of like that feeling of grief and like, you know, where my connections could be, although like the same situation hasn't happened to me, but kind of like those experiences are, and feelings like after you lose someone are very similar. And I think like having my friends around in the film, like my real friends kind of gave the opportunity for me to like feel more myself in the role and kind of like embody it. Um, so I think it, it really helped that, yeah, I had a lot of people around me that I already had really close connections with. And that was easy for me to kind of like, build off of that and kind of like yeah get in the mindset of like what it was like to graduate and and kind of correlate a lot of those feelings into the character yeah it was it was really cool to see like just this whole group of friends kind of come together and do this thing especially for us at the end of june it was just kind of the you know the main let's say i don't know wave of pandemic was like felt like it was over and it was like whoa like people are kind of out again and 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 these friends can kind of see each other and a lot of them knew each other. Some of them we cast externally and I think they all became pretty close. And, and it was so much fun to see like most of them, even if they didn't have scenes that day would kind of just show up to, to hang out a little bit, which was so great. Or, or like the next day I'll, I'd see on Instagram, like all of them in, in a story at like 2 a.m. outside of McDonald's just hanging out. And I was like, yes, good, good. This is good. You know, just like just <laughs> hanging out. So, so the set I think was I just as much as possible try to make it like as informal um, as possible, you know, even though we had like, you know, like trucks and stuff and big camera and all, all that stuff, it try to make it uh, just as, as relaxed and, and kind of familial as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my feeling as well, you know, especially when you watch scenes like uh, sort of all the friends hanging out at an apartment, but maybe specifically as well kind of the scene where um where is a fight um between noah and one of his friends and he, he kind of goes off on his bike and and kind of you know goes into this 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 frenzy of of desperation and and uh, not exactly knowing how to deal with his feelings um could you like all three of you maybe tell me a little bit about how it was kind of shooting this scene where you're all together on set and and how how was the experience because it's, it felt really intense mm -hmm. oh great I, i'm glad i'm glad you you felt that yeah we well so the backyard pool scene was shot like in the middle of the shoot and then that bi bicycle scene which was like a bit of a stunt um we shot that was the very last thing we shot i knew like i, I just kind of want to build up to it slowly and and um yeah, I don't know, the, the backyard pool scene, I guess it was also kind of the, the last scene that had like most of all these friends together, um, you know, kind of strategically always trying to make a shooting schedule that that makes sense or that has like a progression. And of course, you know, we need to kind of put scene, we can't shoot everything in order, um, of course, because of logistics, but as much as possible trying trying to do that. So So for the fight scene, yeah, I don't know. I think that was all them really, it was, it was just like really good acting. I, I honestly can't really remember any cues or anything I could have given them, um, except that we did rehearse it like in some random studio a little bit, a few times, and I would just like film it with my iPhone. Um, and and we'd kind of do it again, again, again. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, this is working, this isn't working ahead of time. Um, and then for the bicycle scene, yeah, we had like a stunt coordinator and like a stunt driver. And we practiced it before the shoot as well. I just knew like, we can't like figure this out on the day. This will be like too hectic and too stressful. So I think, you know, prior to the shoot, maybe like a day or two before we started the whole film. Um, yeah, we have like, I have all this great behind the scenes footage of Isla with the helmet and the random back 
back lot and like some 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 uh uh some parking lot just like trying it at a bunch of different speeds and yeah just making sure everything was safe of course but trying to make something that felt that had this intensity and 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 this feeling of just um yeah just kind of feeling lost right like that's kind of where he's at yeah. and kind of where that happens yeah uh, i like and and kai how how has that scene for you yeah i mean i think it really helps that we are able to rehearse it the fight scene at least behind the you know the backyard by the pool that that was kind of yeah to have the ability to kind of rehearse that and talk with everyone and kind of be like okay like what are we comfortable with if like you know i step here or, like i say these things or like you know how am i going to get that reaction sort of out of that other actor and i think like having the ability to have those conversations multiple times before filming that day definitely helped um because it kind of like gave the opportunity as well as like filming other scenes that there was a lot of tension between me and that one character helped as well kind of like encompass that you know in the moment as well as with the bike scene like having that kind of on the last day the last scene definitely helped and gave me like the ability to be like okay wow well, like i've done all this work and you know this character's gone through so much and like you know to be able to kind of like break down like that i think it definitely helped that it was on the last day and you know I still also had time to kind of prepare and have multiple conversations if I had questions, but I think definitely having it on the last day just kind of gave me the opportunity to be like prepared and kind of have it the way I wanted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've found so as well. Um, is there anything you would like to add, Kai? Um, I think that we went through the fight scene a couple times, like, We did it first in the studio and then at um, the actual um, place. But I think the best outcome came when we were, we weren't trying as much. I think once we were able to like be comfortable with each other and get on the same page of like, well, if I do this and like you say that, then like, I feel like it would make sense for like what's happening and like the emotions involved. So yeah, I think just once we were all on the same page, it just came together really nicely. And like Isla, Isla's last scene of him, like riding his bike away is like amazing. <laughs> I still try to do it like wild. Yeah. yeah, I found so too. Like I think that that, that point um, where you just, you know, kind of could, translate your your experiences of the shoot into one like sort of last cathartic scene that that translates really well um and there's also um some scenes between the two of you where you where you share moments of of, of tenderness and and intimacy um i mean that's obviously also a kind of intimate question but um maybe if you like could you tell me a little bit about how you went about shooting those scenes oh, yeah wow. really. um well i think for kai and i because we have like such a special relationship and like real kind of connection or i don't know comfortability and we've been together for like a long time i think that those scenes came like very naturally and you know i don't know just to be in a space where you know it was very important for all of us that you know we were in a space that just everyone felt comfortable and safe and i think that that was you know to be able to be provided of course you know through conversations and kind of like figuring out for what everyone um like what we are comfortable with and kind of you know to be able to see kind of our relationship on such a, yeah like an intimate level like you said on screen i think it definitely shows really well because it's just it's such a real connection that i think no one can just write or like create or encompass like i think it definitely just showcases kind of i don't know our relationship Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't at first I didn't want it to be cheesy at all. Like I didn't want you to be able to tell that like this was like a scene like in the movie like a set plan. So I I liked especially the one the one scene when we're laying in the bed and it's kind of like a side angle and I yeah. think that was really beautiful because it just shows like definitely. Yeah. It shows like 
what actually happens. Like, we actually, like, Mm -hmm. have those conversations of, like, like, difficulties in the, like, relationship of trying to read your other, like, read your partner and, like, those complexities. It's like, Mm -hmm. I think you did a really good job at portraying that. And I'm really happy about that scene. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. Yeah, I think it was, like, I'm gonna say this yeah like you guys put it so well you know like I think you you two do have a really special thing and and I can feel it when I speak to you guys and I felt it like a year and a half ago when I met you guys for the first time and and so having these more intimate scenes you know I I think like the way I went about it or that we we together went about it it's like I wanted to tell you like this is why I think this these scenes like have their place in the film um but kind of leave it in your hands as well kind of say like this is how in my mind we would shoot it in like a a tasteful way um but ultimately like kind of you're in control and and you guys have ownership of it and and can kind of pull the plug at any time even once you know one even in post-production um and i think i was really glad when you guys watched the film you know and we're like the film is good and everything works and I, i was really happy um, but, you know, if, if for some reason um, it, it would have been a choice to kind of get, get rid of one of those scenes, uh, that would have been OK. You know, and I don't, I don't think the film would have suffered for it. But I do think now the film, um, it's just like a really kind of accurate and beautiful account of, of, of you two in a way, you know, like you play characters, but there's a lot of you that's, that's in the film. Yeah, I think so, too. It, it, it shows a real, real sort of... Um closeness that that you can immediately experience when you watch a film and um the way this relationship but but also that general sense of of a loss of a, of a friend of yours is kind of portrayed as that what i said earlier kind of this this contrast of of deep deep a deep feeling of loss but also of that that those very warm colors of of a summer of um that almost sort of like uh, um, stand by me kind of feel, you know, that of 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 a, of a youth in 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 bright colors of uh, and high temperatures. Um, could you tell me a little bit about how what that kind of brings to the theme of the film, bringing together together these these two aspects? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I knew from the beginning um that i wanted to oscillate between these emotions of of exaltation and uh and high energy and and happiness you know set against feelings of, that were a bit more contemplative and and i i knew you know f- upon hearing the song which is so beautiful but absolutely is kind of you know a, a bit melancholic and, and a bit more somber i knew i wanted to juxtapose that to to really beautiful kind of um colorful images full of life and so yeah um i think like in doing that in like in 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 going back and forth and and placing these two things together i kind of wanted to find the nuance and kind of all the the sort of infinite spectrum of of shades of gray that we inhabit and live um every day in our lives you know and that ultimately this accumulation of like these small scenes that might be uh don't appear so meaningful you just kind of individually kind of really add up and actually kind of represent your experience and and who you are and and so in um yeah in adolescence like all these young there the all these um short snippets of kind of mundane life um kind of you know when you when you look back on it like that's what you remember you know I don't remember like Christmases or birthday parties or like kind of big events that much I just kind of I I remember feelings I remember people you know and I think that's how I wanted the film to feel as well like we're I think we're high in emotion high in characters but maybe a bit low in story but that's okay because ultimately the film should be felt you know and um and hopefully that that comes through. Yeah, yeah it does. Um, I, I felt kind of like that, that 
the different details of the story kind of um, they they show in you know many different small ways in the way that that you guys have a conversation on screen and um, it shows those little splinters of kind of 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 that loss that has happened to you. Yeah, I found it really beautiful. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I think that's it for today. <laughs> Um, it was really a big pleasure to to meet you and to talk to you, and um, I wish you all the best. And I hope you have a lot of fun uh, showing the film at the Berlinale. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to it. All three of us are going to be there, so it'll be fun. <laughs>